Secular, sexual, contextual, textular. Oh, that's a tough one. Craig Bartholomew wants to know, what is your favorite 80s slash 90s instruction video? That's an easy one. I am all about rock discipline from John Petrucci. Uh, it's kind of part of what made me a big fat dream theater fanboy, but it's just plain great uh, in terms of technical stuff. It doesn't have a whole lot of like theoretical knowledge or sort of deeper musical concepts. It's just a bunch of like right and left hand exercises, but they're really, really good. So if you want to play fast, man, that sort of chromatic picking exercise, the like four fingers all the way up and down thing, like using that to race with myself and race with the metronome is how I got fast at playing guitar. So I highly recommend you check that out for Sheezy. Peter Gass wants to know, Trey, please tell me if you do any stretches, pre-playing workouts as a warm-up, and if so, what they are. My fingers hurt recently. Well, I do uh, do a couple, let's see. So I actually have periodic tendonitis type of problems, especially in my wrists, elbows, and shoulders. There's a couple that I highly recommend. Actually, some of these were shown to me by a physical therapist friend of mine. This is a good one um, to get the sort of outside back here, like this. So what you do is put one hand on top of the other and you're gonna kind of push your wrist like this. And then, oh, I gotta kind of stand up to do this here. So it's like this. You kind of twist, you, you, yeah, twist it around and just hold it like that, gently. Don't push too hard, okay? But you're using the left hand to push in your wrist a bit and it stretches out your wrist. See how I'm, um, my hand is facing away from me too? Do that on both sides. Hold it for like 20 or 30 seconds and breathe while you do it. And then there's this one, you grab like this and push your hand back like this. Hold that for 30 seconds. I think maybe the most one of the most important things that you not do when you're stretching like this is do it too hard, okay? Go real gentle. It's better to hold it for a while than to try to push it too much because especially if you've already got some inflammation, you can actually make it worse. So just take it real gentle and I think you'll probably be fine. I once hurt myself working out and I didn't play guitar for a whole summer because of the pain in my wrists. So you gotta take it easy out there. The God of Hentai, Guy Fieri says, LOL, knew you were a masshole. You goddamn fucking right I am, born and raised kid. Fucking wicked retarded from Boston. No joke. What are you, wicked retarded? I drove my car all the way from Arlington to California. Boston things, just Boston things. You and every fucking kid you know has a sister named Patricia. I consider myself to be pretty damn lucky that I managed to get out of Massachusetts after living there for 19 years and I didn't have an accent. So uh, I'm not really sure why, except that people who talk like that, a lot of them are fucking morons and I managed to avoid hanging out with fucking morons most of my life. There, there's like little things that I say weird, like I say tour instead of tour, and uh, milkshake to me will always be a frap, but you know, I think still I managed to come out of there talking like a normal human being instead of a fucking moron. Fucking drink 30 beers, kid. Are you even a fucking one beer queer? Junie41 wants to know, do you generally agree with the pricey of the better about guitar gear? Have you ever found a cheap guitar sounding like a 10X more expensive? Well, first of all, no. I absolutely do not agree that the pricier the better. Uh, although that can be true, uh, I have played cheap guitars that are better than more expensive ones. And the same thing with gear. Um, it has more to do sometimes with the design than the actual execution, and that's something that you gotta keep in mind. It's very possible to find very cheap gear that does exactly what you needed to do, and it's also possible, and this happens to people a lot, spend a lot of money to find out that the thing that they bought, just because it was expensive or nice, uh, doesn't do the thing that they want it to do. So, I don't know, like, I could spend $5,000 easy on a Paul Reed Smith, and get it home and go, oh my God, it's only 25 inches, I can't gent on this piece of shit. That's an extreme example. I actually do have a Paul Reed Smith that's 25 inches and I like it a lot, but I only play it in standard tuning, so. All right, so this one is a follow-up question to one that I answered last week and something I had not considered. Uh, IA Mix and Master wants to know, if you've born in Los Angeles, 
Should you move the fuck out of there? Oh, snap. Honestly, I'd say yes, because I know a lot of people who were born and raised in Los Angeles, and they can be just as big townies as anybody else. And the last thing you wanna be is a fucking townie. So uh, yes, I suggest maybe you should move to one of the other hubs uh, in the country, such as New York or possibly Boston or maybe San Francisco. It'll get you a fresh, fresh perspective and a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of worldly experience, which is uh, something I think that everybody needs. Otherwise, you just wind up with, you know, this super narrow, stupid view. This one is from uh, Open Office, a computer program that I use. Open Office, Calc, as search to the end of the sheet. Do you want to continue at the beginning? Uh, no, you're good. Thanks for all of your help. Uh, you can just, you can just stop now. You're, you've done all you can do. You're working too hard. Why don't you take a break? I consider myself to be a lazy piece of shit. I'm moving city soon. I can't be fucked to prepare. How the fuck do I stop being lazy, both musically, as a guitarist, and as a person? Uh, I don't know, more coffee? I mean, I'm pretty lazy too, to be honest. The secret for me was finding something that I would never be bored with. Uh, the job I have now, doing Gear Gods, keeps me constantly busy and entertained. And part of it is just having someone with a lot of expectations for you, and making sure that you meet those expectations. I mean, I've got... You guys, the YouTube audience that um, expects things from me at a high level of quality. I've got bosses who are, you know, pretty lenient and, and kind of give me a lot of free reign to do this and a lot of the different things, but they still expect, you know, constant content coming out on the website and on the channel and all that. And it's all stuff that I love. You know, I never wake up in the morning. Okay, let's be honest. I never wake up in the early to late afternoon and go, oh no, I have to do work. Like, it's all crap that I love to do every minute, even right now, especially right now, I'm having a wonderful time. Now, I don't think that everybody can find a job where they're super stoked to do it every second, but whatever it is that you're doing, if you don't really super love it and you're not getting paid to do it and it's not something you're really depending on, just cut it, cut it the fuck out of your life. Like, you're gonna spend, your precious time, which is the only thing you really have, is a certain amount of number of seconds from now until you expire to do whatever with you, you know, you do with, with which as you will, which, which whoever you want, <laughs> to go ahead and just, you know, what well, you're gonna find some awesomely mediocre crap that you don't really care about and then just drudge away at it. Ask yourself if it's something you actually really, really want to do. Do you actually want to do it or are you just really doing it for fun? You know, there's a, it seems like a fine line, but a lot of people, I think, really love watching musicians and they imagine themselves doing that same thing, but in actuality, they don't want to do all the stuff to get to that point. So. You have to love the process as well as the end result. You can't just watch somebody else playing guitar amazingly or whatever and go, oh, I wanna do that and then you just wanna get to the point where you can do that because it looks like fun. You gotta love all the in-between from where you're at now to where you wanna be in order to get the most enjoyment out of your life, really. People always say things like, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey, but really, the journey is a bunch of small destinations, if you think about it, depending on how um, discreet you want to look at it. Each, you know, each stop along the way is a small destination on the road to your larger destination. So you can enjoy the journey between all those little destinations, which is like the learning, the practicing, the refining of your craft, whatever it is that you're doing, it's, there's, it's always the same path for 98% of people. No matter what topic you're talking about, music, art, business, you know, dentistry, whatever, it's basically the same path from wanting to do it to mastery. It's generally the same type of thing no matter what. You gotta wanna do it, you gotta wanna keep doing it, you gotta get past the shitty middle bits, because there's a lot of shitty parts in the middle and you gotta just either decide that you wanna suffer through it because you love it so much, or you're gonna give up. And if you're gonna let your laziness 
stop you, then maybe there's something else that you want to do more, you know? I want to sit on my ass and eat donuts all day, and I only do that like once a week. So, you know, when you're feeling lazy, keep your eyes on the prize and it'll tend to keep you more excited. Set smaller goals for yourself and achieve them rather than trying to think of this larger nebulous thing of like being a working musician, being um, an amazing guitar player or whatever. Set a small goal for yourself like being able to play this one really crazy hard song and making a video and putting it on YouTube, whatever, something like that. Or even just like one lick from that song, you know? If your larger goal is to be able to do a playthrough of Fermented Awful G Discharge by Necrophagist, then you're not gonna get there tomorrow. In terms of preparing to move, you should try visualizing what it's gonna look like when you get to your next city, what your place is gonna look like, how you're gonna have it set up to be optimized for the thing that you wanna do, whatever that is. Anyone who knows me really well will probably laugh when I say this, but I actually really love to organize. Um, I am typically not a naturally organized person, but when I sit down to do it, you know, I get really stoked. Just recently, I bought a whole bunch of those like plastic organizing bins, and there's something about that that just gets me so stoked. And uh, yeah, I've actually been using them. I've filled most of them, and my place looks so much better now. Just being that organized and clean is inspiration to me in and of itself. So that's something worth trying. All right, y'all, thanks for watching. Please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and leave me some more questions about stuff you wanna know about and I will see you then. If you've born in Los Angeles, should you move fuck out of there? If you've born in Los Angeles, should you move fuck out of there? If you born in Los Angeles, should you move fuck out of there? Yeah, good question, I agree, Trey? Answer this fucking question, says Brett Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, good question. I agree. Trey, answer this fucking question. Answer it!